A part of family history is telling those family stories. Now I'm going to share one with you today that's near to my heart that I will pass down to my progenitors or to my descendants if I have any. Uh, and this story is my story or a portion of my story. So you're probably noticing this Hello Kitty. You might have seen it in a couple other videos. And it's basically a big blanket on this window that we put on there. Um, to kind of keep out cold in the winter. And when I was little, I got a new bunk bed. And we went shopping for a comforter after a little while. And we found this Hello Kitty blanket at Mervyn's. Now, I got into Hello Kitty because my stepdad or his mom um, got me some Hello Kitty shows for Christmas. And Hello Kitty is just awesome and amazing. She lives near the Miss Hell store, so definitely, definitely big, huge Hello Kitty fan. Anyway, well, I had this blanket until I was about, I don't know, fifth grade? Well, actually, I had it till the end of fifth grade. And at the end of fifth grade, I had open heart surgery because they found out that I had heart problems and I had to have open heart surgery and they had to put a pacemaker in. So this blanket right here is, is is what I had. Well, we had bees. I came home and there were bees everywhere in my room. I didn't get a living space. I had to share it with my parents because we lived in a 500 and... 50, almost 600 square foot apartment because that's what my parents could afford. And I lost a lot of stuff. And later on, way after the fact, we had to get rid of that, including my Hello Kitty blanket. I, it just, it had to go. And someone had given me a different blanket or a different comforter to use. And I did use it. Um, and then we moved. And when we moved, we had gone shopping and we had found this comforter. Um, the exact same comforter, by the way, which we hadn't seen since... Oh, I was like seven when I first got the first one. But it was the exact same comforter. Everything, it was in the package. It looked exactly the same. And I want it. But at that time, my dad was unemployed. And I didn't know if we were going to be able to afford it. I didn't think anything of it. While I was at girls camp, my parents went back to the store. And I think I remember them actually buying it. Uh, but we didn't really do anything with it. I already kind of had a comforter on my bed and whatnot. And so, I remember coming home from girls camp and they made my room all nice. And I saw the same bunk beds. In fact, I still have part of one of the bunk beds that I sleep on still. Um, and this blanket was on there. And I absolutely love this. This is a blanket. I personally will never get rid of it's I can't believe we even found the exact same one even if it had been a completely different Hello Kitty one I would have just been thrilled with it Hello Kitty is something I still love yes I'm an adult I know but I just will and I still have those Hello Kitty videos and movies it's not something I personally can ever get rid of um, but I absolutely love 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 Hello Kitty I always have and probably always will. My kids are probably, if I ever have any, think I'm crazy. But it's something that will be passed down. And when I die, because I'm never getting rid of this blanket, I will pass it down for them to enjoy. And if they want to get rid of it, they can. But I will never get rid of it. It will always be something I have. And I remember when we got my first Hello Kitty blanket, I was getting this new bed. We had moved. We had been there a while enough that I had gotten... My first Hello Kitty video from my grandma on my stepdad's side. And it was just awesome. And it was neat. And we found it at Mervyn's. And Mervyn's is closed down, by the way. So when we found this, it wasn't at Mervyn's. It was, I think, at Walmart or something. And the 
they just don't carry this type of stuff. So, I got lucky, I guess. So this will forever just be a part of me. And I think those are the stories that we need to pass down when we're writing our own personal history. The stories that really tug at us. The stories that that are heartfelt and warming because we want people or people who go on after us to, to see that part of us because they're going to have those same experiences. Maybe it won't be the same experience I had where I had a blanket that I absolutely loved, a comforter, and I had to get rid of it. What happened was, is they had a bunch of bees, they had to spray everything, and it destroyed a lot of stuff. And so because of that, I had to give up a lot. Okay, so I wasn't going to cry, but, oh well, I, I do this. It's the thing I do. And so because of that, finding something that was like a part of me was wonderful and awesome. And it's these stories that I feel really make us who we are. And that's why I encourage you, if you're writing your own personal history, to really write down these stories. And to really just be grateful for the things you have. And think of the blessings that came from those stories that you are sharing. Think of the blessings that maybe you could share with other people. I mean, these stories help shape us. And I absolutely love that I have these wonderful stories I can share with people. And I wish I had kept a journal and wrote more stuff down. But I do a lot of scrapbooking. I'm definitely going to be sharing the story in my scrapbook.